everybody, welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. My name is d and I've got another video for you guys. Today we're going to be counting up the top five ways that Deadpool can join the MCU. And I think this is going to be a very good video. I want to show you guys a tease that Ryan Reynolds has done for us, the fans, right over here at CBR.com. Uh, Ryan Reynolds enters phase five of his Deadpool conspiracy theory. The official Instagram of Ryan Reynolds is called Vansity Reynolds. And we're gonna take a look really quick at what this is. I'm gonna go ahead and click in and zoom in right here so you guys can see this. This is his official post. Now there's a lot going on here and you can't make out all of it, but what it is, it's a conspiracy board that shows a number of different things. Obviously over here on the right side, you see the, the blonde is Blake Lively, his actual real world wife. You see Hugh Jackman above that. You see images of Deadpool wearing the Hugh Jackman mask. I believe that's from Deadpool 2, if I'm not mistaken. But there's also, um, you know, Rhett Reese, Tim Miller. There's a number of others. A sticky note that says, who knew Turk 182? And we can see here that Taika Waititi is shown down at the bottom. And he is known as the director of Thor Ragnarok. And he will be directing Thor 4, Love and Thunder. And that is something that I think could be a tease for what is to come. It could be that this is um, supposedly just going to be um, a big prank to us, the fans. But if we want to go along and go along with this conspiracy and read into what he's showing us here on this little board, a lot of it is jokes. It teases over to Betty White. It shows the original the, uh, appearance of Wade Wilson in live action, which was X-Men Origins Wolverine. But specifically with Taika Waititi, we're looking at okay this is a mcu director it's a guy that is directing not one now but two uh movies that are going to be in the mcu really funny guy he plays korg in uh in thor and also in avengers endgame but we're also really excited because this could be ryan reynolds teasing that he will be joining deadpool will be joining the mcu in phase either four or five we want to look at phase five specifically because of all the roster that we've seen come out for Marvel Phase 4 after uh, Comic-Con's big announcement, there was several movies and several TV shows that are going to be in the MCU, but all of them so far we have we know to be rated PG-13 or TV-14 according to TV's rating standards for the shows. But with this one, it's a little bit different. With Phase 5, Blade is probably either going to be shoehorned into the end of Phase 4 or he's going to be inserted into the beginning half or beginning of Marvel Phase 5. That is, to me, where I think it might start to get a little bit more open-minded, more serious um, as far as ratings and, and maybe even blood and things like that that typically are not shown very much in the MCU. They usually, they've done a really good job of keeping the ratings down so that it's um, PG-13 across the board for almost everything except for the Netflix properties. For that, you know, I, I commend them because there's plenty of opportunities to go above and beyond and cross that line and they didn't take those. But with Deadpool, obviously we all know that it's a franchise that is known for being um, very crude, very crass, um, and in the movie franchise, has certainly taken the liberties to go above and beyond to make it extra in every possible way. Now, um, I personally don't think that's necessary. I don't think it's necessary to have to include F-bombs, more than one F-bomb. Um, that, that type of content is not necessary for storytelling. But what is necessary for telling a Deadpool story is letting you, the audience, know that he is someone that is not super respectable and not someone that has a lot of uh, <laughs> moral like scruples, you know what I mean? So for him, um, they did a good job with making him PG-13 in the Christmas re-release of Deadpool 2, which was called Once Upon a Deadpool, which was hilarious and it was wonderful. And a lot of people didn't know it was coming out. A lot of people didn't even know it came out, but the people who saw it loved it. And um, I think that that was Bob Iger's push to say, hey, let's see if we can make it work in the MCU. It didn't end up as big as people wanted or people thought really, but um, nevertheless, it still can work and people will still go out to see it, especially if they put enough marketing on it. Ryan Reynolds says here on his post, he says, uh, investigating heading into year five, or as I call it, phase five, the point is I love conspiracy yarn. Hashtag leak aversary, which is five years from when the Deadpool leak happened. The footage of Deadpool, played by Ryan Reynolds, the right way, 
was released, which then convinced Fox to go ahead and partner with Marvel to write and make Deadpool. This is a lot to say, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get into the reasons I think work putting Deadpool into the MCU. So the first way that I think that Deadpool can fit into the MCU is what I call full MCU. This means PG-13 movies, okay? So the only way that you're gonna get Deadpool 100% without being held back at all in the MCU is PG-13 because that's the only way that Marvel is making their movies. Now, we still don't know whether or not they're going to try to push the envelope with the Blade movie with Mahershala Ali after Marvel Phase 4, which is what Deadpool, which is what Ryan Reynolds was alluding to here in his post. He's calling it Phase 5. If it is real, and this is some sort of a hint at what is to come, then we're looking at a Phase 5 possibility and we don't know what's gonna come around the corner for that. So it could be rated R movies inside of MCU continuity in the theaters by Marvel Studios. I don't think that's gonna happen though. Bob Iger has been very clear that he wants to keep the adult content very much separate from the branding of the family oriented content. Doesn't mean it's for kids, but it means it's for families, which means it has to cover a broad range of rating. So with that being said, PG-13 movies from now on would have to be what you would do with Deadpool if you want to keep him inside of the MCU 100%. But that's not the only option, okay? So hear me out. So that's the first one. And that would function very much like Once Upon a Deadpool where he, he has like a sensor button. He's able to kind of, you know, bleep out his own cuss words and you could do funny things like put a Mickey Mouse logo over his mouth every time he curses or something. You could have fun with playing with the fact that he was rated R, he was very crude and crass and adult, and now that he's being shoehorned into a PG-13 PG film, you could have a lot of um, Shrek-like humor in that film where it's clearly adult, adult humor, clearly adult-oriented content, but it's in the context of a movie that works for families. And so that to me would be hilarious. I would really like that. But that, again, I know a lot of you guys don't want that. That's not the only thing. That's actually only the first of five. So hear me out. Here's number two. Number two is they actually do rated R movies that function downstream in the MCU. What do I mean by downstream? So you guys remember the Marvel Netflix shows like Daredevil, Punisher, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and The Defenders. So those shows, uh, they were a lot of fun. They were really good. In fact, the Daredevil series is probably my favorite TV series, uh, live action for superheroes, maybe of all time. It's really, really good. And Punisher was great too. Iron Fist season two was really good. But um, they, they function after the events that happen in the movies. So the movies will have a big event. It'll be Civil War, it'll be an Avengers level threat or something, that will happen. And then you'll hear the shows talk about it from time to time, and that's about it. There's no other real crossover, not a lot of um, back and forth happening with the storytelling. The TV shows never get to actually influence upstream to the movies. The movies, get to do their thing, their priority number one, and the shows happen after. So what I mean by rated R movies for Deadpool that function downstream in the MCU would be very much like if they were to do Blade rated R, they wouldn't be able to have Blade-like content in MCU films like the Avengers because then the kids that go to see Avengers would be exposed to the Blade content. You can't have that. So it would have to go the other way. Blade could show up in Avengers stuff, but it would have to happen with the rating level of Avengers. And so with Deadpool, he could function in his own movies the way that he wants to in a rated R setting, but it would have it would it would never really affect the events of the main continuity. It would almost function like a Marvel Netflix show except it's a movie or a series of movies. So it would basically be like what fans are already getting now with the Fox content. So uh, with that Fox content, just creating rated R movies that are cognizant of what's happening in the MCU, it would basically be no different at all. That would basically be exactly how that operates. So next I would propose an, a third option. This here is give Deadpool a rated TV mature TV show on Hulu Fox style. 
So I would I was thinking to myself it would actually be really cool if we got a Deadpool TV show We could explore a lot more stories uh, Get a lot more zany because you have way more hours to tell these stories I'm sure Ryan Reynolds would be super down to do that if it meant more Deadpool stories um, and You can make a lot of money doing it, too so I think with that in the same way that the rated R movies would be downstream of the MCU storyline the Hulu content for uh, that will be going from Marvel into Hulu like the Modoc show um, hit monkey uh, Howard the duck those shows those are gonna be animated shows but what if they gave Deadpool either an animated show or a live-action show uh, and they it was still played by Ryan Reynolds that would be really really cool I would really I would really like that I think that'd be great um, you could do whatever you wanted and it wouldn't ever have to affect the MCU. You could say it's in the MCU, very much like how the Netflix shows say they're in the MCU and they reference things that happen in the MCU, but it, there's never any crossover whatsoever. So to me, I think that's going to be uh, the closest alternative you could have to option number two, but still giving you something a little bit different, more content even, by hours. And I think that would be really cool. I think a lot of people would appreciate that. Fox style, what I meant by Fox style is basically that Fox uh, is has allowed Deadpool to be aware of the Avengers, aware of the MCU, and yet 100% separate. So to me, I think that, that is, uh, that's a big win because a lot of the fans that want it to stay the same can get it, and, the, and then Marvel could still choose from time to time to just pull him. And, and if they wanted, they could reference or use him in, in any way they want. So to me, that's another good option. So that's option number three. Option number four. You could have Deadpool operate solely as an MCU supporting role or guest appearance only. And he could do it in many different movies. So this being different than, for instance, like an Easter egg or a cameo where an Easter egg is like is something that's placed into a movie to reference something else or call back to something else a a cameo being a person or a character that gets a a quick moment in the film you kind of have to easter egg hunt for a little bit um that is slightly different because then a supporting role could be you could have spider-man 3 with tom holland be spider-man teaming up with deadpool to take out carnage and that would be him in a supporting role uh, more than halfway through that film you see Deadpool he's part of that story um, he's integral to the story that would be vastly different I think that to me would be another good option is if you could just have Deadpool in the MCU all over the place that would be really really cool and I know that fans everywhere would love that and so depending on what the movie is you could have the um, the level of I guess vulgarity or uh, uh, sensitivity to the rating um, you could have that fluctuate a little bit. I mean, if he's going to be in like, um, if he's going to be in Captain America, you know, it could be, it could be way more action and, you know, you could play off of the language thing, you know, or if you're going to do him in Spider-Man Homecoming, you can really tame down a lot of the inappropriate stuff, but just have fun, subtle jabs at the bromance that he and Spider-Man have in the comics. That would be really cool. And, you know, you could just play it by ear depending. And if he's in Blade, you could just have him go absolutely nuts. You know, so like it, it could fluctuate. I think that having him as just a recurring guest appearance in the MCU would be really cool as well. Even though we wouldn't get a lot of, at that level, we wouldn't get any uh, Deadpool movies. You'd still get to see Deadpool. And that I think would be really fun. So that's my fourth option. Now the fifth option I think is probably the most special. And if I'm being honest, I think this is probably what I would want the most. This to me, um, I would want this the most followed shortly by I think option number one. Um, so cameos. Stan Lee is now known as the cameo king. He is the, he's the lord of cameos. He's been in all of the MCU films except for one so far. And now he has passed away and he is no longer with us. And with, with that being said, the MCU feels a little bit different. So when you see the movie that does not have the cameo from Stan Lee, you don't notice it during the film. But after the film, you walk away and you're like, huh, there was no Stan Lee in that. And it kind of, it feels 
a little empty. And I think I figured out the solution to how we can fix that problem as fans without having to, um, I guess, you know, CGI in Stan Lee after he's passed every single time, um, get a voice actor to imitate him. We don't need to do all that. What we should do and what I think we should do for sure is make Deadpool the new cameo king of the MCU and sprinkle him throughout everything. You make him the new Marvel Easter egg hunt where if someone swings in to save a, a, a liquor store robbery and you know the hero's taking out the bad guys, Dead, Deadpool could be there with his headphones on picking out chips and being like, dude, there's 35% air or there's 35% more air in this bag. What the heck, you know? And you could have him just cracking jokes and being in the background or, or cooking in a in a in a kitchen or something. You know, he could be rowing a boat or whatever. It doesn't matter what he's doing. But to me, I think that if anyone could do it or should do it, you should make Deadpool the new cameo king slash Easter egg hunt for the MCU ongoing for every TV show and every movie. I think he should be in every single one if Ryan Reynolds is willing. And to me, that sounds very sweet because you could modify the, the level at which he is crude, vulgar. You don't have to make him crude or vulgar. You could just have him in the background of things, doing things kind of like Stan Lee was doing where he's reading a newspaper, he's delivering a pizza to someone, he's driving Uber. You know, like you could have him do anything and be that cameo king, carrying on uh, the torch that Stan Lee held for so, so long. I think that would be really sweet. I would love to see that. And I think anyone could get on board with that because it doesn't require a rated R storyline to have him cameo in literally everything. So that would be the best. And he, you could even have him freeze frame the movie you're watching for like 10 seconds and make some witty comments on the movie and jump right back in that could be his cameo from now on where he in he in, literally interrupts your movie for about 10 seconds to say something to you the audience about the movie and lets you carry on and then maybe you actually see him in the film so you get an interruption and you get a cameo that would be really really cool i think that would be fun and those are my five options again let me go ahead and read these off to you again number one is pg-13 movies which are full MCU continuity. They go back and forth from the MCU affecting Dare, uh, Deadpool and Deadpool affecting the MCU. You also have number two, rated R movies, downstream of the MCU where the MCU affects Deadpool, but Deadpool can't affect the MCU. You have option number three, rated TV mature TV show on Hulu. And that one would operate the same. The MCU could affect Deadpool, but Deadpool would not affect the MCU because he's in the Hulu-verse. Um, so that would be really cool, and you could do that one either live action or animated. Also, the MCU uh, number four, an MCU movie, a regular MCU movie supporting role guest character. And that to me would be a lot of fun. Um, he could just pop in and be part of the story. He could be a guy that people go to when they really need to get something done and can't get it done by themselves and they've got no other options. They go to Deadpool. That'd be really fun. Almost like Heroes for Hire, but he's the Merc with a mouth. So maybe someone's got to buy a Merc for a minute. You know what I mean? So that would be really cool. And then number five, make Ryan Reynolds Deadpool the cameo king of the MCU for phase four and beyond tv shows and movies and all and you could have it in in any way you want but i think having him have an interruption in the movie where he cuts out and starts talking to you the audience for a minute about the movie you're watching and cuts back and also have a cameo that is hidden somewhere inside the movie that would be really really cool i love these options let me know what you guys think about these and also do you guys even want Deadpool in the MCU? I want you to let me know that. Do you want him to maybe stay in the Fox brand completely separate with no connections whatsoever except for jokes? Or do you want them to put him in the MCU in some capacity? Because there's a lot coming to the MCU and I think that having Deadpool would be a really, really good thing. Even if the, the rating system has to dial it back to PG-13, we've already seen in, uh, in Once Upon a Deadpool that that is 100% possible and hilarious. So you be the judge 
you let me know which of these options you like the best and again one more time i will show you guys these options number one is pg-13 movies full mcu number two is rated r movies downstream of the mcu number three is rated tv mature tv shows on hulu fox style completely separate but it can reference and also mcu number four is mcu movie supporting guest roles only and number five is cameos carry on for stan lee as the cameo king of the mcu ongoing so those are the five options for deadpool in the mcu you guys let me know what you think about these was there an option or an avenue for having deadpool in the mcu that i missed let me know about that down in the comments below i can't wait to hear from you guys and anyways you guys rock so much if you guys like this video make sure to give it a big thumbs up also make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on notifications so that you could be alerted right away when i go live next time that way you guys will never miss a single thing anyways thanks guys you stay tuned for more right here on the stuff of legend Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend, and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video, or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.